Welcome back to the Credible Deb YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about Docker and Portainer on a Proxmox VM. Before we get into that, I want to thank everybody for checking out my channel and this video. I really do appreciate it. I don't want to waste any of your time, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. What we're looking at here is the Portainer install that I already have. We'll be setting up one new from scratch on Proxmox. But I just wanted to talk about Portainer for a moment before we get into it. If you're not aware, Portainer is kind of like a front-end management for Docker, Kubernetes, and I believe others as well. I'm not as familiar with Kubernetes and the others, but with Docker, I have a little bit of experience with it. A lot of people would manage Docker and the containers from the command line, and Portainer gives you a very nice graphical web interface for creating containers. You can have clusters, all sorts of stuff makes it really easy for you to spin up apps and services on Docker containers. And what we're going to be doing is creating a VM with Ubuntu Server 22.04, installing Docker on that, and then installing Portainer uh, within Docker as its own container. And that'll let us manage Docker without ever having to touch the command line. So as you can see here, I have a few things already running on my SQL for uh, development purposes. Heimdall, I think that's how you say it. It's kind of a, a web interface for accessing a lot of the things on my home network and the things running in Portainer as well. I have Plex running on, running on here. Very easy to set up Plex within Portainer. I have uh, LibreSpeed which I was using for internal network speed testing, and of course, NextCloud for uh, cloud file sharing. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need is, of course, Proxmox installed. If you don't already have that, I have a video I posted about a week or week and a half ago that'll help you get that set up if you don't already. The next thing that you're going to need is the Ubuntu Server 22.04 ISO. And you can get that here from their website. I have links to everything in the description, as well as the command lines that we're going to be running. There's not very many of them, but I'll have those in the description as well, so you don't have to go hunt them down. So once you have all that set up, we can go ahead and jump over into Proxmox and create our VM. To do that, we'll just right-click on our node, click on Create VM. Now, I should mention, I'm doing this in a VM, and it's kind of a debated topic on whether Docker should be in an LXC container on Proxmox or whether it should be in a VM. I've chosen to go the VM route. It does use more resources than a LXC container that you would have in Proxmox, but the issue uh, with doing it inside of a container is security. It might not be a big deal if you don't plan on exposing any of your Docker containers to um, the outside internet. You know, if everything's just going to be local, it's probably not that big of a deal. But if you're doing this in a production environment or you're concerned about security, then you should probably be doing this in, v in a VM because it's just another layer uh, that's added because the VM is going to run in its own kernel where the LX, uh, LXC container is going to share the kernel and resources with the Proxmox host. So if this uh, Docker container and the Portainer that we're setting up were to become compromised, it's possible that also the Proxmox host could become pro uh, compromised, which obviously is going to be a problem. So that's why I've chosen to do it in a VM. You can choose whichever way you want. I, I would encourage you to do some additional research on the um, the issues with doing this in a VM versus a LXC container and make, you know, whatever decision's best for you in your use case. So we've got the VM screen up here. We're going to give it a name. We'll give it a very appropriate name. We'll just call it Portainer and select the storage location where my ISO is, and we'll choose the 22.04 live server. We'll keep the rest of this the same. The system, we'll keep it all at the defaults. The disk, I'm going to choose this VM storage 1. And just one thing to note, if you're not aware, uh, when you choose LVM or LVM thin, LVM, whatever... Uh, 
gigabyte stored like the disk size that you're going to choose here it's going to allocate that so it's going to be not available for future vms that you create whether you use that space or not when you choose lvm thin it doesn't allocate the entire disk size that you put here it's only going to allocate as it's being written to so if you want to oversell your over provision your disk uh, space amongst your VMs and containers. You could do that with LVM thin. You just need to be really careful that you don't actually fill up the storage because once that happens, all of your VMs that are pointed at that storage are going to start getting IO errors and they're going to run into a lot of problems. So when you're using LVM thin, you need to be very careful about how much you're allocating versus how much you really have. So we're going to choose that here. We're also going to choose discard because this is an SSD underneath. Um, we'll choose the SSD emulation. And we'll give it two CPU cores. You can do whatever you want here. And we'll give it four gigabytes of RAM. And we'll go ahead and hit next. We'll keep everything on the network, the defaults. And we'll confirm and hit finish. We'll wait for that to spin up. It'll only take a moment. And then we'll hop into the console here and start the VM. So we'll start this up and then we'll go through the install for Ubuntu server, which is pretty simple. It's nothing to be afraid of. It is, it is in the command line kind of like a command line GUI uh, kind of interface, but that's uh, pretty simple to use, pretty straightforward. All right, so English is good for me. English keyboard is good. Here I'm going to choose the minimized one. Uh, no need to install anything additional that we might not need. So to do that, you'll just tab until you get over there, and then you can hit the space bar to select that one. And then you just continue to tab until you get back down to done and hit enter. Now here, it's going to give us a DHCP address. I'm just setting this up temporarily. I'll be taking it back down since I already have one set up. But for you, if this is going to be permanent, you might want to consider setting a static IP address here. Go ahead and continue. We don't have a proxy, so we'll skip that. That US mirror is fine for me, so I'll take that and continue. Here's this the disk uh, setup. You know, if you wanted to set up a different disk or whatever, but this isn't a VM, so we just have the disk that we gave it that has 32 gigabytes of storage. We're fine with using it. So we'll tab down until we get to done and hit enter. And now it's just showing you the partitions that it's going to create, which again, this is a VM. We don't really care. We'll just go ahead and hit done and continue. Here it's telling us that it's going to wipe everything that's on that disk and that's fine again because this is a vm so we'll hit continue and we'll put in our name we'll give our server a host name and put in our username and a password and tab to get down to done and hit enter here it's asking us about ubuntu pro we don't really care about that so we'll hit continue now it's asking if we want to install the open SSH server. You may want to do that. I'm going to do that because I'll be copy and pasting some commands in and the copy and paste doesn't really work in the Proxmox console. So we will enable this. We're not going to import an identity or anything. We can go ahead and hit done. Now here you could install Docker. I haven't tried this from this menu. I always install Docker straight from their documentation. You could try it here if you want, but I'm going to be skipping this. I won't be choosing any of these options. So we hit tab to get to done. And now we'll wait for the install to finish, which doesn't take very long. All right, our install is finished, so we can tab down to reboot now and hit enter. It will tell us to remove the CD. We don't really have to worry about that. In this case, we'll just hit enter here. And then once the machine restarts and comes back up, we'll be able to log into this with SSH, and then we'll be able to move on from there. So we'll pull up a SSH terminal here. SSH and our IP address 
Uh, well, actually, I put in a username. Was 187. Now, I've had some issues sometimes with uh, SSHing to this. If you do it too quick, it uh, seems to want to give you fits, but if you wait a minute, it'll it'll go through. So, first thing we want to do is update the system. So, sudo apt update, put in our password, and then sudo apt upgrade. So, only a few packages. We'll let those update and then we're ready to install actually here's so that's about services we'll just hit enter for the default and uh, the first thing we want to do is install docker and docker has multiple ways you can do this but one of the easiest ways to do it is through this convenience script so that's what we're going to do this curl command is going to download the script so we'll copy this uh command here the curl command and we will put that into our terminal to download that file and then we need to run it so we'll use sudo to run this so we'll do sudo sh again i'll put all this in the uh in the description down below and we don't want to run this uh dry run when we actually want to run this one here sorry about that so we'll go ahead and run that then our password which i think i typed wrong all right, so now Docker is going to install everything that we need for it. We'll install. We don't have to do anything else but wait for this to finish. And once this is finished, we'll go ahead and we'll install Portainer. All right, so that's finished. So we'll go ahead and head over to portainer and we have a couple of commands to run here so this first one is going to create a volume for our portainer data so we'll just copy this command and bring our terminal back up and we'll need to run this with sudo so type sudo and then you paste in the command and that creates the volume and then this next one is the docker run command which is going to actually create the docker container for portainer and we'll do this with sudo as well. We'll run that and it'll download the image. This doesn't take very long at all, but of course it'll depend on your internet speed because it does have to download that image in the container. So now that that is done, we can pull up the web interface. And we'll need to do that using the IP address of the portainer server. Uh, or not the portainer server, sorry. I mean, technically it is, but the Ubuntu server that we set up, we'll be using that IP address, and we'll be going to port 9443. And you want to make sure you do that with HTTPS. It will not respond on the HTTP. It's only HTTPS. All right. So you'll get this screen that says your connection isn't private or it may look a little different depending on the browser that you're using. That's expected and it's okay because this uses a self-signed certificate. So just click advanced or whatever you have to do in your browser to, to get to this where you can, can uh, continue past it. Now you'll be at the screen where you're setting up your username and your password. And your password does need to be 12 characters long and you have an option to disable the collection of statistics about your usage so we'll just generate a random password here doesn't really matter since i'll be deleting this whenever the recording of this video is over and we'll hit create and that takes you directly into the web interface for portainer and you'll have some get it start, uh, getting started information as well as a link to add additional environments like if you're creating a cluster or maybe you also have a kubernetes uh, set up or cluster you can add that here if you click on that you can see the different options now of course some options are only for the business edition and we we installed the community edition so keep that in mind as you'll go through the interface and you'll see some things are locked down to the business edition so at this point, uh, if you click on home, you'll see your local container or environment that you set up here. And if you click on that, you'll be brought to this screen 
and this is going to be the dashboard for your actual environment that we just set up you'll be able to see some information about how many containers you have and all that kind of good stuff uh, the part that you're probably most interested in is going to be this app template so if you click on that you'll see a bunch of the app templates that Portainer makes available to you by default there's a lot in here a lot of really good stuff but you can extend that and to extend that you can find repositories online that have additional templates uh, there's a few on github i'll link one down below and what you'll do is is you'll just go to settings and you will replace this url right here with the template json file that they provide you whichever one you decide to get uh, the one that I'll link down below has quite a bit of stuff in there. Like if you're looking for Plex and some of the things I have installed, those will be in uh, the one that I have linked down below. So be sure to check that out if that's something that you're interested in. Really, that should get you up and going with Portainer and Docker. And um, one other thing I would tell you if I go back to my, my environment here is that Whenever you install something like uh, MySQL or Heimdall, however you say that, any of these kind of services or even like Nextcloud, well, you'll see over here at the right this published ports. So, you know, MySQL generally runs on 3306, but in this case, that port is going to be accessible at 32768 instead of 3306. So it's kind of doing like some forwarding there. So you'll use the IP address, uh, either this local IP address, this 172 IP, or you could use the IP address of the Ubuntu server, and then you would use this first port number here to access that. So yeah, that'll be it for uh, Portainer and Docker on Proxmox. If you have any questions or anything about Portainer, Docker, Proxmox, anything else, let me know down in the comments below. Again, I appreciate your time checking out my channel in this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. I really do appreciate it, and everybody have a great day. Thanks.